Okay, Wildcats. Um, I was only going to do four videos, but I'm having so much fun reading and learning about people that are new to me, or maybe people that I've heard of, but I didn't really know all of the accomplishments and um, the perseverance that required them to achieve what they did that I can't stop at just four. So I have another video that I'm making. Um, so again, these little biographies are coming from Vashti Harrison. She is an artist, an illustrator, and a filmmaker um, who challenged herself with uh, this book, first of all, by drawing and researching a different person every day in the month of February to celebrate Black History Month. And um, it became a book. And so, yeah, that's what we're doing is we're just reading little biographies. So I'm going to start today with Andre Leon Talley, 1949. And um, I please forgive me. I forgot to do research to see if he is still with us. I want to say yes, um, but I'll put information in the description box and let you know. So there's his picture. He is a fashion editor. It says, Andre grew up with an appreciation for style. He was raised by his grandmother, a domestic worker in Durham, North Carolina. Even though they didn't have much, they took care of what they had. With clothes freshly pressed, they went to church every Sunday. Attending a black church in the South was almost like going to a fashion show, and Andre saw how clothing could make people feel different. With the right outfit, folks in this small town could transform into aristocrats. He found his first copy of Vogue magazine at the library and soon had stacks of his own with pages pinned to his bedroom walls. He earned a scholarship to attend Brown University, where he studied French literature and befriended art students at the nearby Rhode Island School of Design. Andre developed his now iconic sense of style, donning capes and fedoras, and found his creative voice writing a column for the Rhode Island School of Design newspaper. After graduation, he moved to New York and met his idol, Diana Vreeland, the visionary former editor-in-chief of Vogue. She was heading up the Costume Institute at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. As an intern there, he impressed her so much that she took him under her wing, becoming his mentor and friend. In 1983, he got his first role at Vogue, for which he traveled to fashion shows around the world. Five years later, he became creative director of the magazine, and in 1998, he became editor-at-large. The fashion industry has historically been dominated by white high society, with Vogue magazine at its foremost publication. And for years, Andre, a six-foot black man from North Carolina, was one of its leading voices. Despite rising in the fashion ranks, Andre has always stayed grounded. He has actively advocated for diversity in the fashion industry. The people who loved Andre the most, I read that wrong, the people who influenced Andre the most, but loved him too, right, were his grandmother and Mrs. Freeland. They showed him unconditional love, and that is what he reflects back into the world. Andre proved that grace and kindness are always in style. So I love that. Okay, and then um, we are going to do from the Little Leaders Bold Women in Black History book, we're going to do Marceline Harris. She was an Air Force general. Um, and here it says 1943, and then there was no death date, but she did pass away fairly recently. I want to say 2019, but I will double check my facts and I'll put the information in the little description box below. All right, there's our picture. No one would have ever guessed Marceline would become one of the most highly decorated military generals in the Air Force, not even Marceline herself. After graduating from Spelman College with a degree in speech and drama, Marceline set her sights on Broadway, but soon saw an opportunity in the Air Force. It was a steady job and a chance to see the world. 
Her specialty was aircraft maintenance, although she had to convince her male colleagues that she had a real interest in aircraft hydraulics and aerodynamics. In 1971, Marcelli became the first woman aircraft maintenance officer. Over the next decade, her assignments took her from Thailand to California to Colorado to Japan, as she supervised squadrons at various Air Force bases. From airlifting food supplies to protecting the no-fly zone, the maintenance of aircraft equipment is an extremely crucial task, and Marcelli was supervising all of it. Despite the tough hours, she managed to enroll in more aircraft courses, earn a bachelor's degree in business management, and raise three children. In 1995, she was promoted to major general and became the highest ranking woman in the Air Force and the highest ranking black woman in the entire Department of Defense. She took a post in the Pentagon as the Director of Maintenance, which made her responsible for every single weapon and aircraft used in the entire Air Force. She had a career that lasted more than 30 years and has been recognized with countless awards and decorations. Marceline accomplished many firsts in that time, but made a private commitment to establish opportunities for all women in the armed forces. So, two amazing people. I hope that you've been enjoying these as much as I have. Um, I really, really am inspired and in awe of these people who have overcome so much things, struggles that I cannot even fathom. And I, um, I praise them and I hold them up and I'm very happy to be bringing these little biographies to you. So I hope you're inspired as well and happy reading as always. Have a great day, Bob.